Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on introduction to Winchell. So um, let's look at the agenda for the day. So I will do a quick introduction of uh, myself and uh, boundary systems, go over the topic overview, then um, we'll go through a quick demonstration of the, the software itself. And then right at the end, we will have a question and answer um, session. So if you have questions during the webinar, feel free to just pop them in. Um, in the questions section of the uh, webinar uh, dialogue. So just pop them in there, or if you begin to hear me, just uh, pop me a message in there and uh, we'll definitely attend to it. So the, the questions and answers session, we will have that at um, the end of the webinar. So for the duration of the webinar, all attendees will be in listen only mode. All right, I will go ahead. My name is Ifram Puyeng. I'm a PLM specialist um, at Boundary Systems with just over seven years experience on PDC products, specifically Winchell products. I'm a certified Winchell implementer and trainer. A bit about boundary systems, uh, we regard ourselves as the technology leader. We partner with uh, PDC and including other um, software partners like Solid Edge, Itraj, Autodesk, and other technology companies. Boundary systems is the number 16 fastest growing private company in the greater Cleveland area. And also part of the PDS vision group of companies of global companies. So if you look at the map, um, you would see where all our companies are actually uh, placed. I am based down in South Africa. Um, so we take care of the South African companies, UAE um, and the Kuwait region. The capabilities that we offer are in product lifecycle management, which is the topic for, for today, data management, um, CAD design and consulting, so we also help our customers with that. Simulations and also making sure that we help our customers introduce the new product development. So as I've mentioned, we um, partner with PDC as our main partner. Um, we also partner with other companies that are uh, listed on the slide here to make sure that we deliver a comprehensive solution for our customers that actually meets um, their needs. So after the webinar, if you've got any technical questions, feel free to send them directly to myself, ipoyeng at boundaries.com, or if you have any sales queries, sales at boundaries.com. You can also visit our website for additional information boundarysys.com and uh, you can also visit our YouTube channel Boundary Systems um, that is where this webinar will also be uploaded to um, in a case you wish to revisit it. All right getting right into the topic for today I just want to start off by um, just talking around uh, product lifecycle management and um, what product lifecycle management is actually is. So in essence, this is the creation of a product from concept to marketing and in other instances to the actual retirement. Um, I'm saying retirement because Winchell has got other tools that sort of helps you manage the service part of the product once it is out in the, in the market. Uh, so the data basically stored in Winchell and help you in, in servicing the product. So it is an integrated information driven system or driven approach that basically should compose of people that are actually doing the actual work. So be it actual design, 
the manufacturing of the actual product. And uh, it should also comprise of the processes or the practice that basically automates the, the process and makes it easy for the flow of data in the system. And um, also make sure that there is a obviously technology aspect um, to that product lifecycle, which is now the windshield software that we will be talking about. So that windshield software should be able to be driven by people and processes um, to make sure that it handles the whole life cycle of the product. And every life cycle of a product should have a start and an end. That is why I, I include that retirement in there. So you should be able to manage it through that whole process. So in the example that I sort of have here of a life cycle is the product we normally start as, a, as just a concept in the R&D department and then comes to the design of the initial that product and then the development of the design which is more of the, the matured um, handling of the actual designs um, and then eventually once that design has been released for manufacturing we will then start the manufacturing process of it and once that's complete um, the product can be now sent out to the market and while it's out in the market that will need to be serviced um, so that is one of the aspects that the PLM must also have. Um, so the, the other thing that the PLM must uh, also address is I mean, in, in, in the current times, you want to make sure that you get your product quickly out to the market. So your product must be, your, your PLM system should be able to shorten that process, or allow you to be able to shorten that process. We'll talk about how that is sort of achieved in the future. So yeah, now jumping directly into uh, the software itself. So the um, windshield in the client server, or it is a, actually a client installed on the server side, and it comprises of a client, which should be just a front end where you'll be interacting with the system, then the server where the system is actually installed, and then the database where the data is um, it's stored. So all artifacts that are part of the, the system are actually stored on the server in the database. So nothing would be stored in the client end of um, things, client side of things. So this is just a diagram that basically shows how this is structured. So on the server, you'd have the application itself, the virtual application, and then the database where the data is stored. Um, and then from the user end, you'd be accessing the, the web user interface or your browser to be able to access the data. So, right, so then uh, Winchell has got a lot of modules in it. So we'll touch on a couple of those modules that are, um, are listed on the, on the slides here at the bottom. Um, so as I've said in the previous slide, Winchill is actually browser-based. So the user interface is on the browser, um, and then it is compatible with all the browser types. So Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Chrome are all compatible with, um, with Winchill, or can be used to access the Winchill system. So these are the three main or the frequently used uh, modules in Winchill. There are others um, that are also part of the, the Winchill PLM tool. So the first one here being the PDM link. So PDM link basically manages your product data management. So this would be either the CAD data or the document, and the documents that you would manage, the product documents that you would manage. And then this also controls the life cycle of that product in that PDM link setup. Then you also have a project link that gives you Things like being able to uh, manage your project, so be able to create the project plan, and assign resources to the plan, and then be able to sort of dispatch those activities in the plan out to, to the users. And it also allows you to get a rich gun chart, and then also allows you to see things like the critical path of that project, and also timelines. 
um, you know, every project will have a start and an end time. So it basically manages that. And if you also need to manage things like the project budget, uh, project link also um, caters for that. And then the, the last thing is the MPM link, which is the tool that's been used to create the manufacturing processes. And then it also allows you to validate the designs. So if downstream, while the manufacturing, you realize there's an issue, you're able to lock a change request or a, a change notice that can also be integrated with the engineering data that is stored uh, back in the PDM, PDM link and um, sort of change being visible to everyone who's involved or impacted by a product change. Um, also assisting reducing errors during the manufacturing processes because the data that has been used to build this manufacturing data for manufacturing, manufacturing processes, it is actually linked directly to the design data stored in the PDM link. So just going a little bit into details for PDM link here. Um, so it basically manages your, your data, and this is all the data you've got, uh, documents, zip files, PDFs, um, CAD files from different applications. Um, also manages your change in the configuration processes. So it's got an out of the box um, change process that can be, that is readily available to be used, uh, but that change process can also be tailored to meet your business processes as well. Um, so as we said that Winchell is web-based, um, so that means it is a central repository that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. So as long as you've got uh, the link to the server and then you've got internet and obviously web browsers, you'll be able to, to access your, your data. And the main other thing is it allows you to collaborate on, on CAD applications. So if you've got an assembly, you can have a couple of designers working in this assembly on different um, sub-assemblies, of course. And then as I made my changes to this sub-assembly and then push the changes back into the system, the other user is able to refresh his model and uh, they immediately see the changes that I've made in their, um, in their model. And it can also be inter integrated with other systems, um, such as ERP systems um, or any other systems that you might have in your in your company. And it works to it works with PDC Creo. So PDC Creo is a um, CAD software that PDC offers. But Windshield doesn't only manage Creo data; it can also manage your SolidWorks, your Venta, um, AutoCAD, Cantia data in here. And with the application, it's got two sets to it, the full and the viewer. The full being um, able to go in and modify a model, check it out, make changes to it, and then save it back in the system. And the viewer being a tool that could be used in an instance where we have to do a design review. And um, we, we really don't want to make any changes to the actual model. Um, so nothing to change on there, you're basically giving feedback based on that model, you're giving things like annotations, um, redlining on the model itself, and then saving that back into, into, into the system against uh, the part. So if something has been promoted, for example, um, whoever needs to review that promotion or needs to approve the promotion can use the Creo viewer to be able to see if the changes or the model is complete and if they need to make any comments to it, um, they can they can do that and then save that back in the system as an annotation. And another so another the project link um, on here. So project link, the one part of it, other than the uh, project management uh, when you create plans and so on, the other part to it is I can use that to share data with my external contributors. If I have a supplier and um, who I need to share a certain part of my product data with, um, I can basically use Project Link for that. So Project Link will allow me to just share a certain part or portion of the, the product into the Project Link, and then the external contributors accesses the Project Link, and they can see only that data. 
they are unable to see the complete um, product data. So we normally use it to, to, to share data with such uh, people there. Um, and just going into another details, we have the project link. It's obviously uh, on, the, on the project management side. And, and uh, the one part I wanted to bring up here is that last portion here. Um, normally, or in most of the cases, companies do project plans in a Microsoft project. So Winchell integrates with uh, Microsoft project. So I can simply take my project plan that's in that's created in Microsoft's project, and then import it into Project Link, and then my plan is then imported as it is in my uh, Project Link, and I can also, if I need to make changes to that plan, I can export that plan out to my local drive, modify it in Project uh, Microsoft's project, and then bring it in and synchronize it so that it reflects those changes that I've, I've, I've done in the, in the project link. Right, so the MPM link or manufacturing process management, uh, this is the tool that's basically used to create and store data and processes that is used to manufacture your product. Anything that needs to, anything that basically needs to, or that is involved in the manufacturing of a product, it is um, created in the MPM link. And so as you know, the uh, manufacturing bit of materials is basically focused on the parts or any any artifact that is required to build a product. So things like your consumables, so paint, to some of the other things that you use in the building of the product can basically be involved in the or included in the in the embo. And, and, and the powerful thing with the Winchell PLM is that embom that you actually creating an NPM link is actually generated from the EBO, the engineering uh, bit of materials. So this is tied together. While something is changing in the, in the design, the engineering bit of materials, and that changes are sort of propagated in the M-bomb as well. So the one thing that I've mentioned at the beginning was, in, in, in these uh, times, you need to make sure that you shorten the development process so that you get your product out in the market very quickly. So, so with this, or what the system allows you to do is, as soon as the initial e-bomb is available in the system, I can already start building my M-bomb. So as that e-bomb matures, that information is now propagated into my M-bomb, and uh, I'm starting to complete my M-bomb as well. So as soon as the e-bomb is released and completed, I can also quickly complete or finish my, my M-bomb and make sure that that is ready for, uh, for the implementation. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna go into the tool now and show you exactly how this how this works. So this is now the, the, windshield, that I've been, uh, the windshield tool that I've been talking about. So as I've said, this is a, a web-based uh, tool. So I basically need the link to uh, my web server on my server, and then the uh, login username and password. So I've logged in as the, the user demo, and at this stage, I'm basically on the home page of my um, Winchell system. And so on my home page here, I've got a couple of, of tables that sort of quickly assist me to achieve certain things. So the first one here is my workspaces table. So the workspace table or the workspaces I use to integrate your or basically the, the, the private working space uh, that facilitates communications between my care application, Creo SolidWorks, Inventor, and Windchill. So I'm basically working on in, in, in that uh, workspace and then I push in my data to share it in Windchill with other users. So it is basically your, your private drive in Windchill. Um, and then because I'm an admin I'm logged in as demo who is also an administrator, I can see other users' uh, workspace. So if someone has left the company and they have up the, I uploaded the changes in the workspace, I can basically find those users, find the workspaces, and then um, check in that data into Winchell. So this allows me to, uh, from the admin side of, of Winchell, be able to 
make sure that we don't really lose, lose data. And the important one here is the my tasks table. So my tasks table list all the tasks that are assigned to me. So you can see at this stage, there is a change notice task that I have to go in and, and complete. So this is now assigned to me. But again, I've got the views to this. I can also uh, filter my view based on, on this. For an example, if I want to see all the change tasks that I have completed or closed, um, I can filter it with that and then we'll list those um, in the table here. So I'll switch back to that. And the updates is all the data that's been recently added into the system or recently modified. And then right at the bottom there, it is all the work that I'm currently working on, I have checked out. So the way WinChill works is you, you've got different context to it. So there is a product context Product context here, it is data, it is used to store data that is related to a specific product. Then you also have a library. So library will contain information that can be used across uh, across all the other products. So your, your bonds and nuts, so that sort of library context. And then I have another one here that's a project context that we talked about that I was used to um, manage a project and also share it with your external contributors. I'll start with the product. Yeah, so I have a simple product that I've created here that is called a KTM motorbike. So if I expand that product, there's a couple of things that I can do on here. I can go into the folder structure of this product. So the folder structure of this product um, basically gives me the folder view of the product. And the next thing with this is I can create subfolders as well. So what, what I can do in the normal Microsoft Explorer environment uh, or Windows Explorer environment, I can also I can also do here in terms of creating um, creating folders. And you will also notice that uh, this folder that I have here, CAD, this is the folder that contains all my CAD data. So I also have a documentation folder. So this will normally contain my documents, so the PDFs, the Microsoft documents and so on would be contained in, in that folder there. Um, then because this is a product, I can also decide who will be able to access this product. So that is set at the Teams level. So the permissions to the product. And you will also see there that um, you have a list of attributes for this uh, or roles to this. Um, so based on those roles, the user would have different permissions. This stage under my product management, I've got three users. Demo is also part of that. So this means all the users that are under this product will have full access to the product. We will be able to delete, add, remove, add users to the to different roles and so on. Okay. So that's basically that. So now if I go back to the folders here, this is where my CAD data is being stored. Okay. And then uh, in the CAD data here, you will also notice that there is an icon that's called a, a mini thumbnail. So I can easily, so if I don't remember the name of the part, I don't uh, remember the number of the part, but I know how the part looks. I can simply hover over that icon and then it brings in that, the view for that part. And uh, this is also interactive, so I can rotate this to see if it's exactly what I'm looking for. And I can also see some metadata information about, about that part. Yeah, I can also see some metadata information about the part. I can also see where this part is being used. If I click on that, it basically loads the where used of that part, and then it loads another part. I can see that this part, yeah, it's actually, it actually uses all these components. So these are the components that have been used to make up this complete assembly. And I can still see where this has been used. So I'll quickly go into the information page of the part. So this is where I get to see additional information about this part. So the version, what tool was used to offer this, this, this particular component, um, and um, things like the, the life cycle that we talked about. So your product will have a life cycle. So in this case, 
these are different states stages that our product uh, would undergo so at this stage i can see that my product is uh, actually released and so once it's released i can easily be able to export out a bill of material from this particular um, object and to do that i'll simply go on the structure so the structure simply gives gives you a um, sort of a breakdown of that assembly structure so this is how this part would look also in in, in winchell and then uh, i also have additional attributes that i can look at here and the visualization as well so this also gives me that additional information where i can interact with the 3d itself um, on here Right, so the one thing I wanted to do is to get out a bit of material from here because the part my part is released. Uh, to do that, I'll simply go and just generate a multi-level bit of material. This is how this material would look, look. Um, and then I want to be able to share this material, this this bit of material with my purchasing department or my supplier. So what I'll then do is I'll go ahead and export this list out. So I can export this list, or list out to any of these types here. So I'll go ahead and export it out to Excel at the stage. So you can start Excel. Excel at this stage, then my bill of material it is now exported to Excel. So because it's an Excel file, I can simply open that file and then further manipulate um, this information if I need to. And again, this uh, particular bit of material, I can decide what sort of columns do I want to export as part of this. And then I can basically create a view of my bit of materials that include that includes that those those columns as well. So that is on the on the CAD side of, of, of things. Um, but now if I want to look at the product structure or the e-bomb of, of, of this uh, particular assembly, I can go to the rated objects. I've got a, a part or what you call a WT part in Winchell. So this uh, basically copies or mimics the exact same structure that you have on the, on the, on the CAD side. Um, the, the nice thing with this structure is that there's a couple of things you, you can do. I can, I can get out a rich bit of materials out of this. So if I am creating your substitute and the alternate parts, I can be able to generate a bit of material that includes those. Or even if I want to go and um, if I've got a substitute or a replacement part for that uh, spring, for an example, I can, I can basically on the configuration itself here, go and add, okay, add, in fact, this is on the manage replacement here, go and add a, a replacement part for that and the replacement part will be either an alternate part or a substitute part so i can basically go and add those on this table and make sure that they're readily available and when i am actually getting this bomb out and we realize that in the stocks we don't have this particular spring i can quickly go and basically replace the spring with either an existing existing one or basically just a, 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 a completely new part. So that's all I wanted to show you on there. And then the, the other thing when it comes to the processes um, would be, so I can see this part is not in design. If, if I wanna go and basically release it, I can go and create what we call a promotion process. I'll go ahead and do that. Create a new promotion process. Give it a name, uh, specify where I want this prom promotion process to be stored, um, when it should be completed by. Okay. And then in the next stage, this is where I'm going to say, I want to set this because we've, we've done the work on here. We want to start the process of prototype. So we're basically promoting this part to a prototype phase. And then on here, I can basically go and pick who will be uh, the promotion approver or the reviewer in this case. So I'll go and set the demo user as an approver. 
to complete that process. So what that means is the promotion approver will receive a task uh, that basically asks them to complete the promotion or approve the, prom uh, the, the promotion. So this is the task that I've received, approve promotion request, go into this task as an approver, and I can basically go look at the promotion objects. So this is the part that we, we went into promote, and I can go in and look at this part in a viewer. So I can open this part in a preview view. And simply interrogate it. So load it in the view. Um, and when I'm in the view here, I can I can check a couple of things. If I want to see the size of that the diameter, I can simply do that by just using the tools that are available here. By just doing that, I can see okay, that is the correct diameter um, for that. Can look at other things if I want to. Uh, and and uh, the, the, the other cool thing with uh, the Creo view as well is if, if if we know that we will be selling this as an, as an end attempt, this is a, a real shock um, assembly. So if we will be selling this as a, um, as a product and we, we want to look at ways of packaging it, um, using this tool, we can see what sort of package size we would need for something like this. So I can go and say, just envelope this particular uh, module here. Just envelope this and uh, it, it, it basically create a, a container uh, details for this. And then based on that information there, I can go and create a container that would fit this particular um, component. So even for design reviews, um, you, don't have, you don't need to have an uh, application, authoring application to be able to open this models up and, and review them. Um, you can use this uh, viewer tools to do that. And uh, also be able to obviously collaborate with your external review reviewers um, on this as well. So that's basically the process. So we're happy with everything with this process. So I'll go ahead and just con complete this task. What's the details of it? And I have options at the bottom here on how to dispose, disposition the task. You want to approve it, you want to reject it or send it for rework. If you reject it, it will just send a notification to the process creator to say the task has been rejected. If I send it back for rework, I'll obviously include comments with that and it will go back to the approver for rework with comments in it on what they need to do. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and approve that and complete the exercise. Um, then it will basically go through the, 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 the whole process of the object. So you can actually see uh, on my tasks here, if I just refresh on my task, I'm actually getting a next task in the uh, promotion process where I need to check um, the state of that part. So it will go through that and then it will be sending tasks and, uh, and activ or activities to different people in that promotion process until it gets to the end of it. All right, so that's what I wanted to show as far as um, Winchell is concerned. And as I've said, I mean, you can take that bomb that you were looking at just now, the, 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 the rear shock, and then create a manufacturing bit of material out of it and manage that separately from the e-ball and restructure differently to, to e-ball because how a product is manufactured is different from how it's been designed. Although the manufacturing of the emblem will include everything that's in the, the e ball. All right, so that is all I wanted to take you through as far as um, introduction to Winchin is, is concerned. Um, so I'm just going to bring up my slide back again. Yeah. Uh, as, as I've said, I mean, we, we've gone through the, the different tools. Uh, in Winchell, the, the PDM link, project link. Um, I also talked about Creo. There's other tools also um, 
there are, there are also included in Winchell. So you've got things like Winchell RVS or Winchell Integrity, and um, that is actually a tool used to manage um, your requirements. It also allows you to create validation processes to validate um, the requirements and also to manage the software part of it. And there's also a tool called uh, ThinLynx, um, which is uh, basically to an industrial tool for Internet um, of Things, basically helping you to, once your product is out in the field, be able to monitor the product and uh, get some feedback from the, the product in the market. And then obviously, based on that information, uh, it would help you build the next uh, phase of that product uh, better. All right, so at this stage, I'll go and look if uh, there is any questions in the questions section here. I see there's no questions at this stage. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump to the next slide. So we are offering training. Um, if you look at that link at the bottom, you can actually go into that link to be able to look at the, the timelines as far as trainings goes. Um, we, we offer trainings visually. Uh, we also do on-site trainings as well. And again, I mean, if you're interested in going in depth as far as what we've talked about today, uh, feel free to reach out to, to us. So as I said, any technical, reach out to me at uh, ipoyeng at boundaries.com for any sales, if you need a demonstration, if you, if you need to discuss you know, anything regarding the, the software, sales at boundaries.com. And again, for additional information, you can visit our website, boundaries.com. And we also have a YouTube channel uh, called Boundary Systems, where this uh, webinar for today will also be uploaded um, too. So at this stage, I see there is no questions in here. So I am just going to go ahead and say thank you, everyone, for uh, attending today's webinar. As I said, if you have any questions regarding anything that we talked about, uh, feel free to reach out to, to us. Uh, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.